YouTube, what's going on? Welcome back to another Advanced MX-5 track guide. This week we are taking this little baby around Virginia International Raceway, the full course, the big boy. As you can see, sort of overindulged in a bit of sun over the weekend, been a bit busy, so out a little bit later than normal. But with that being said, let's just jump right in, look at the track conditions, check out the setup and see what we've got going on. So here we have the track conditions, time of day, things like that. As you can see, the track is toasty 49 degrees and we've got the 50% moderate usage as normal. Then looking at the setup, we've got pretty much a standard setup for me. Um, softer front bump than the rear, rebound, very stiff. The only thing that's unusual for me is I've put the medium front roll bar in. Um, normally I would try and put the firm front roll bar in just to give us a bit more control, a bit more stability, a bit more responsiveness, but it just wasn't working. So if you would like to set up, join the Discord, link in the description down below. You can get the BLAP, the OLAP, as well as the telemetry data from the Discord. So just jump in, enjoy. But let's jump on board with the hot lap video this time. Enjoy.
And so that's the lap. Now let's break this baby down. So we're crossing the start finish line. We shift up to fifth gear and we're hurtling towards turn number one. Breaking point for turn number one is the number three board just here. There's also some tyre markings. This one here, X marks the spot I like to use. Um, however, it's quite hard to see. So if you're not into using little markings on the track, the three board is perfect. So we're going to be breaking all the way down to second gear and it's a very awkward first turn here. You want to obviously get on the power as early as you possibly can, but you also want to keep it nice and tight on the exit as well. So you, you're finding that balance. And also with the braking, you, you're going to be braking heavily in a straight line and then you are going to start turning in quite early. So if you just play it forward here, you'll see braking quite firmly down to fourth. Down to third gear by the one board and then we begin to turn in, still keeping quite a lot of brake on here. Then down to second gear and then we start to try and bleed off the brakes and just keep it nice and tight to this kerb on the inside here. Um, we want to sort of glance the very, very end of this kerb and we want to be full power or heading towards full power by the time we get here. So there we go, we've just hit full power, we've just glanced the kerb. And now we can speed this baby up and you'll see it's just keeping it nice and smooth up to third gear, keeping it nice and tight. Now if we watch that back in full speed, things to note, brake at the three board, brake hard, begin to turn in very early and only start to trail brake properly when you're in second gear. So bang, three board, down to second, trail braking, power when you glance the kerb, there we go, keeping it tight on exit. Lovely stuff. Now we're heading in to the next turn. Um, I believe this is, is this turn two? And then turn three is here. Turn two is much of a nothing turn. It's all about turn three. Now, I personally like to leave it in third gear here. I feel as though if you shift to fourth, you gain more speed, obviously, but then you immediately have to bring that speed off. And because you're turning at the same time, it's just not worth it. You get left you get pushed to the outside of the track far too easy here. Third gear gives you more control. So if we just watch it, we're in third gear, just banging off the rev limiter, keeping it nice and tight. And as we get to the end of this kerb here, that's when we get, we begin to brake, just braking nice and gently, trail braking here. You're just controlling your speed. Your car's going to swing out to the outside of the track, and then you're gonna cut back and clip the kerb on the inside. So past that kerb, we lift off the brakes, braking gently, less than 50%. As you can see, we're just judging it here as well, by the way. There's no, there's no you have to brake this amount. If you your car is heading too far to the outside, you're going to need to pump the brake, give it a nice sharp stamp, just about 50%. That's going to put more weight on the front. It should slow you down a bit. It should give you a bit more control as long as you immediately return to a nice smooth trail braking. We just watch it through. Now that I, I know my car's sort of settled, we're, we're heading towards this kerb on the inside. We begin to think about putting the power on. And at this point, I know I've messed up. I know I've taken too shallow a line. So as you can see, I'm not fully committed on the power here. Um, I, I'm trying to sort of anticipate that my car's going to end up in the grass over here, trying to stop that from happening. And what do you know we do? We managed to hold on, we managed to save ourselves from a 1x, but it's just one of those things with this corner, it, it changes every single time and you just need to get something that is smooth and consistent. If you're smooth through this turn, you'll be better than 99% of the people who are doing it. We just watch it again full speed. Braking at the end of the kerb, keeping it nice and smooth, trying to adjust, try not to apex as early as I did. Definitely hit the cable though on the inside. That's what you want to do. That cable pull you around. You really need to do that. And then obviously trying to avoid the grass on exit. And then we're immediately into the next turn. And this is this left hander is so important. If if you don't get on the power at the right time here, you've lost two, three tenths. Easy. Easy. So if we just watch it, we're coming into it in third gear. Breaking points is unfortunately the only thing I've got. These tire markings here. Um, I break at this one just here. Just trying to circle it, trying to highlight it. 
there's, there's not, nothing much more I can do than that. Um, we're keeping the car in third gear, and because we're keeping the car in third gear, it's going to understeer a bit more. It's going to bog when you put the power down, um, and that, that's the reason why getting on the power as early as possible is so crucial for this turn. As you can see, just braking by those tyre markings, braking fairly hard initially. Now, although we're not going too fast, the key is to do your braking very early. Brake hard. And then we begin to trail brake. You want to cut across the kerb on the inside. And you want to try and be on the power before you get to the kerb. As you can see at this point, I wasn't on the power shortly after I am. But ideally, I would say, if we can roll it back just a few frames here. I'm still braking here. Looking back on the lap now, I want to be on the power at this point. Um, I'd suggest applying the power smoothly because you're going over the kerb, the car's unsettled. Um, if you just apply the power a bit smoother, it's going to make sure that your car's not going to do anything crazy. You know, you're not going to end up spinning around, facing the wall. So just get, again, get on the power early. That That is, that is the thing to take away. And we're actually just going to watch this whole section through now. So we're lined, we're lined up. Because of how much speed we need to take through that left, we're lined up on the wrong side of the track for the next turn. What this means is we need to just sort of cut across it, essentially. Um, and once again, because we're cutting across the corner, we need to be smooth on the power. We can't remain 100% throttle. So if you see, just a slight lift and then remain full power after we go over the kerbs. Unfortunately, I end up getting caught out on the grass on the very extreme left of the track here, which compromises my line through here. But again, ideally, you're going to want to just cut across the kerb. You can keep it full power at this point because you're higher in the rev range. It's going to be much better. And then we're just flat out all the way through here. I know I probably contradicted myself about 12 times through this section, but if we just watch it back at full speed, the thing, the, the thing to remember is when you're cutting across the left and the right hand of kerb, you need to come off the power a little bit, just about 80%, something like that, just to keep your car nice and stable. And for the left hander, get on the power as soon as possible. So braking hard, turning in, cutting across the kerb, getting on the power mega early, just a slight lift there, avoiding this kerb on the left, and then we can cut this kerb on the right, and then we just bounce over all these kerbs, shifting up to fourth as we're headed down this flat out section into i think it's called the roller coaster which is quite apt we're going to be shifting up to fifth gear on the right hander here so we're waiting we're waiting then we shift keeping it flat just glancing the kerbs keeping it flat keeping it flat and i'm going to pause it here for the very very tricky left hander it's very easy to hit to carry too much speed to understeer wide on corner entry here and end up just stuck out in the farmlands somewhere over here um, so my top tip is once again there's some markings on the track um, when we've slowed it down at this pace they're not quite visible to be honest with you but at full speed you might be able to see them just there basically there's a lighter patch of asphalt on the track um, you want to line your car up on the very right hand side of the track at this point you want to turn in and dab, dab the brakes and downshift to fourth gear at this point what this should do is it should send you towards the inside kerb you will get some take some grass on the inside as well um, and that's ideal if you do that that's how we get a bit of extra rotation and carry more speed through the turn than other people may so just watch this through in slow motion I'm actually anticipating this here. You know, what watching this back again, I'm learning myself. I'm actually anticipating this asphalt. I'm already coming off the grass, uh, off the gas, sorry. Dab the brake down to fourth gear. And as you can see, I'm just I'm just heading towards this kerb. And that's perfect. We're already full power. We've done all the slowing down we need to do. And now we're just pinning it flat out, flat out, using this kerb on the exit, being very careful not to use too much of this grass at the end of the kerb, because that will invalidate your lap. And that is how you do it. I'd say of all the corners on this lap, this is probably the one that I'm very, well, I'm most confident on. Um, I, I, am, I am very confident I can take this corner quick. So bang at the asphalt. 
attack the curb. Really, really attack that inside curb. That, that's that's the key. And once again, I'm just going to bring it back. If you look how early I'm on the power here, I'm already, I'm like basically full power. That's about 98% power. And we're not even near the curb at this point. And we're just keeping it pinned. Beautiful stuff. And now we're immediately into probably one of the most iconic, um, awkward, difficult turns I've ever, ever experienced. No matter how many times I do it, I never feel comfortable going around here. Um, I think it's Oak Tree Bend, Oak Tree Corner, something of, of that nature. I'm not really up on my, my corner names. But breaking point, the two board. We are going to be breaking down to second gear. So we're in fourth at the moment. For What, what you need to do is think of this as two right-handers. For the first right-hander, we're going to drop it to third. For the second one, we'll be dropping it to second gear. And we need to really, really attack the exit. So breaking at the two board. As you can see, off the power, breaking fairly hard initially, down to third gear, attacking the curb on the inside, beginning to trail break as we get close to the curb. I'm actually coasting at this point as I'm on the curb, and then we begin to trail break again. And then this is where we're going to shift it down to second gear. And then we come off the brakes quite quickly there. And as you can see, we're looking to get very, very close to this tire wall. We're looking to cut this curb on on the on the inside um and once again we need to be careful with the power with the throttle application almost full power i come off as i'm going over the curb and then full power again once we're nice and settled i'd say that's the biggest key um if you can get the braking right which again is is very very difficult to do then your exit can sometimes be completely destroyed because you've gone, oh my God, I've nailed this. Let's get on the power quickly and, and carry this, this speed all the way down the street. And you end up spinning the car there or sending your car out to the, the outside of the track on exit, ending up in the dirt. So it, it's all about being controlled and patient through the, the entire corner. And it's very, very difficult to do. So if we just watch it back full speed, once again, looking for the two boards as our braking point, braking hard initially trailing the brakes until we get to the curb and then easing the brakes back on for the second part of our braking another little point i will make is for the second part of the braking you do want to try and straighten up your car a little bit to try and make your car brake better this will also drag you out to the outside of the track to line up the exit better as well it's all these things that are working together here that make you nail the corner essentially so braking at the two board down to third gear clip the curb brake again second and then ease on the power as we go over the curb and then just pin it up to third gear down this flat out section there's not much to say here other than fourth gear um if you're using kilometers an hour try and wait until 184 kph um if we're trying to eke out hundreds thousandths of a second you save about two or three thousandths of a second um on shifting when you when you hit red line as you normally would um just being that little bit more patient um now we're headed into another very tricky corner um it's a fast left into a slow right um we're going to be taking the right hander in third gear the left hander we're breaking all the way through it we're decelerating all the way to the right hander we just want to think of this as a deceleration zone really so if we play it through Using this board, the arrow, as our braking marker. Down to fourth. Not braking too hard, really. We're just trying to keep it smooth. As you can see, I'm above 50%, but not by too much. Down to third, and now we're in a straight line. We apply a bit more pressure to the braking. And we're looking to get our car hooked up with the curb on the inside. Get those inside wheels on the curb, and then begin to apply the power. This will, obviously send you out to the outside which is then the very inside for this left hander um on this lap i do actually clip the grass here which i would again i wouldn't recommend doing that this causes me to lift if we just play it slowly i'm on the grass i've got to lift because if i don't as you can see i have to correct the car um if you don't lift and you're on the grass there you're going to spin um so just something to bear in mind i mean ideally 
you want to be about two feet further to the right um, through this section. So you're not on the grass and you can take this flat. But obviously, it's not the end of the world if you understand what you're doing and adapt at the time. Um, this left hand is going to send us out to the very right hand side of the track. And then we're heading down the hill into, again, mega, mega awkward turn. So easy to get wrong, especially when you're on a flyer. Um, I'm leaving in third gear, as you may have just noticed, just heard. Leaving it in third gear. Cutting across this left. Then dabbing the brakes. Then turning right. And then easing on the power. Again, being smooth on the power is key for this this right hander if you're too aggressive you're going to understeer more you're going to cause yourself to scrub speed and you carry the speed all the way to the start finish line it's super important to be just a little bit smoother it makes all the difference so as you can see as i'm coming across this curb and by the way look how much of that i'm taking that was not a 1x that's completely clean if we look, I'm just lifting, keep trying to keep the car stable by having some power on, but not too much to make the back the the rear tires spin. And that, as you can see, because I've been on the grass and my rear tires have been spinning a little bit, I'm already anticipating I need to turn to the right, even though you know in this freeze frame it looks like I'm going to completely miss the corner. I've turned too early. If we play it through, little dab of the brake, you'll see there's some understeer. The track falls away, we understeer even more, and then we just ease on that power. If we watch that again, just the easing on of the power, I, I can't I can't emphasize that enough. It's just it makes such a difference. At this point now, even though you can see I am understeering, it's nowhere near as much as if you were to just use your pedal as as a switch, you know, an on-off switch. Being being smooth on a few key corners on this track the way to do it and then as i say you carry the speed all the way to the start finish line if we just go back up to the top of the hill braking point the arrow braking smooth initially down to third gear then we brake hard then we attack that curb on the inside and get on the power if you touch the grass slight lift then we leave it in third as we come down the hill really really attack this curb on the inside slight lift brake ease on the power as we attack the second curb and then just keep it pinned up to fourth gear and you're heading towards the start finish line you can keep the car to the extreme right hand side of the track if you want if you're into that uh, try and save a few more hundreds and then we cross the line with a time of a 209.035 Unfortunately, we didn't get that 208. Um, there's certainly a 208 in that lap, as I'm sure you can imagine from uh, watching that back with me. Um, I've spotted two, three, four, five mistakes. So the time's definitely there. If you want the setup, join the Discord. Thanks very much for watching, guys. See you in a bit. Bop, bop.